So, um, once again, thank you for the, the invitation. I'm here representing Fred, who is the president of the uh, Portuguese Association for Blockchain and, and Cryptocurrencies or Crypto Assets. Um, I head the technological committee at the association. Uh, Fred asks uh, that you excuse him. He was unable to, to come due to the last minute uh, commitments. He asked me to, uh, to come and present uh, for him our, our um, position or our opinion on the use of blockchain for, for um, non-profit organizations, as is the case for um, the, the association itself. Um, so, um, very quickly, I, I, I would like to, to mention the difference between blockchain and distributed ledger technologies. Uh, although blockchain is a distributed ledger technology, they are not one and the same. Um, and this has a significance for non-profit organizations. Um, I would like to mention the five T's that we think are the main advantages of, of blockchain for, for um, non-profit organizations. Organizations overall, but mostly non-profit non organizations, governmental or non-governmental. Like I would like to talk about some uh, use cases that are being made of uh, blockchain technology all over the world. Um, in uh, uh, non-governmental and non-profit uh, organizations and talk about a couple of use cases that we are uh, working on at the uh, um, at APBC. So um, the, 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 the formal definition for, uh, for blockchain can be something very, very boring, a digital ledger in which transactions are made in Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency or crypto asset uh, or crypto token, and they are recorded chronologically and publicly. So I'm not going to go into the details of the technological details of the blockchain. Um, I mean, you've already had some, some very good presentations here. Um, but in the definition itself, you can find there the, the, the digital ledger. It's important to understand that digital ledger technologies have been in existence before, they have been used in the past. There are several available. Blockchain is a digital ledger technology, but brings uh, 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 a very significant change, which is the cooperative model, the distributed model, the consensus model. Lots of digital ledger technologies have existed, ex are in existence. They can be used by companies, but blockchain brings the big advantage that it can be used by several organizations at once without having a central point of trust. So uh, one of the um, uh, better definitions, or one of the definitions that we like m more about blockchain is one that comes from, uh, from uh, the, the WE Forum. Um, and it's what blockchain enables us to do, not what blockchain is as a technology, but what it enables us to do. And from, uh, adapted from, from their um, definition, um, blockchain, what it does is that it enables decentralizing secure storage and transfer of information. Uh, one of the applications of this is currency, yes, or crypto kitties. I like crypto kitties, they're cool. Uh, and I made money out of them. Uh, I did. Uh, but um, this, this decentralization of storage, this decentralization of, and secure storage, the centralization of information um, is um, getting to be an extremely powerful uh, tool at several instances. Uh, in particular, obviously, uh, enterprises, companies, businesses. Um, but it has huge impacts beyond the economic relevance of the technology. Uh, the blockchain technology can minimize friction, and this means reduced costs, uh, but it can also reduce corruption through the transparency of the, and auditability, traceability of the blockchain. It increases trust in organizations, if your organization is using blockchain to store information and publish information, you are um, more likely to be trusted by your users. And finally, blockchain technology is actually being used to empower users themselves, the end users themselves, not just businesses or organizations. 
Um, so how does blockchain do this? Once again, you've already had a bunch of, pre of good presentations about the innards of the uh, technology, but basically blockchain in itself, it's a database. Nothing else, nothing more. But a distributed database and decentralized database. Two different things. Because you have distributed databases like Oracle, but they are not blockchain. They are centralized. Blockchain has the difference that it's distributed, several computers, and decentralized. No single organization in charge of the infrastructure. And this is what brings its power uh, and its uh, capacity for change in economic terms, in financial terms, but also in terms of um, uh, social changes, in, in terms of changes to the, to the structure of our own um, society. So you have a distributed database, and since it doesn't entail a monolithic centralized authority over the data, it means that you can exchange peer-to-peer -peer information. This can be coins, send one Bitcoin from Mario to Nunu, but it can also be, for example, confidential information or proprietary information or, uh, uh, um, uh, not safe, um, not confidential, what's the word in English? Um, sensitive information. You can send it peer-to-peer -peer without going through, for example, uh, Wikileaks. With blockchain, you don't have to send your documents to Wikileaks for them to be pub published anonymously and uh, uh, rely on Wikileaks and, as an independent, trusted third party. You can publish your documents directly on the blockchain, which brings some curious problems. Um, blockchain also brings transparency with pseudonymity. People think that blockchain is anonymous. It's not. It's pseudonymous. I know how much money is on that wallet, your wallet. I just don't know that it belongs to you. Um, another important characteristic of, of blockchain, irreversibility of records. You don't have that in distributed ledger technology. Since distributed ledger technology, standard distributed ledger technology is centralized, the organization in charge of the distributed ledger can come in and roll back changes, roll back information, update, delete information. In the blockchain, since it's decentralized, to roll back information or to make a fork, as it's called, you have to get consensus from more than 51% of the network. Um, now, these things, I, I, just a while ago I said, which brings us to a curious problem, and I'll restate that again. This capability to publish documents on the blockchain with pseudonymity, with irreversibility of records, brings a couple of interesting problems that I, I personally find interesting due to my, my background. Um, this doesn't sound good. <laughs> which is, <laughs> which is, what if someone goes onto a blockchain, any blockchain, the Ethereum blockchain, the, the Bitcoin blockchain, whatever blockchain, and publishes child pornography on that blockchain? Now, suddenly you have a problem. Irreversibility of records. Now try to get a government to erase that information from the blockchain. It won't be able to do it. It's there forever, public. There's no way to make it go back. Guess what? It already happened. Uh, another interesting problem that it brings, th these characteristics, are I see a lot of companies getting in on the bandwagon and saying, we are going to use the blockchain to store all our data. Oh, yes. And how does that work with the current European GDPR regulations? Because you see, under the European General Data Protection Rules, you are supposed to provide to your customers or your employees or your members uh, the capability to remove their personal data. 
Now, if you store anyone's personal data on a blockchain, you won't be able to be GDPR compliant. So, as I usually say, GDPR is basically, for several other reasons, but totally out of sync with reality. Not just because of blockchain, which is quite recent, but because of other reasons, GDPR is just insane. Um, but anyway. Um, so what, what does this mean? This means that using blockchain technology, you are able to do a bunch of interesting things that you weren't able to do before without having to rely on supposedly independent third parties. One of them, one of those parties, when you talk about currencies, money, is the supposed independent, th independent third parties, trusted third parties, like European Central Bank, or the, um, uh, the Fed in the US, or the banks, Portuguese banks, for example, um, which are, I've heard, independent, trusted third parties, or maybe not. Um, but you can do a bunch of things with blockchain technology that you weren't able to do before. For example, sending and receiving money throughout the world is much, much cheaper. It's one, it's one of the first advantages that people uh, look at or understand about blockchain technologies. Um, but you can also use blockchain technologies, for example, to verify sustainability, sustainable, uh, sustainability uh, practices. For example, um, in genetically modified foods, in the crop produce, in the export of uh, food throughout the world, in pharmaceutical production, you can use the blockchain. Whenever there are several organizations connected together, you can use the blockchain to verify that all the steps in the process are being followed and all of them are have whatever uh, 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 um, characteristics you want them to have, namely that the, they are ethical, they are moral, they are legal. Um, other things that blockchain technology can be used to track shipments, uh, not only normal shipments as in companies that are uh, already doing that to track logistics around the world. You can also track aid shipments in the case of non-profit organizations. You can use the blockchain technology to prove ownership. In third world countries, blockchain is being used to document real world uh, estate. For example, here in Portugal, we could also do that. I'm not saying that we are a third world country, but we still don't have the right way to track land in Portugal, as it was so clearly demonstrated last year with the uh, fires that happened throughout the country where you couldn't find who the land belonged to. Um, also, um, blockchain is being used, for example, to verify uh, identity, especially in the case, for example, of refugees. Uh, let me j illustrate these examples further. I mean, Sorry. yeah. Two minutes, okay, that's quick. Uh, so, I mean, the obvious, the obvious use for non-profit organizations, non-governmental organizations, the obvious use is donations. So you can use a Bitcoin address to receive donations all around the world uh, and to receive donations in countries where you might not be able to receive donations or from countries, from people who might not be able to uh, um, give you donations. Uh, but... Um, you can go further. Blockchain technology is being used, once again, to um, uh, very intensively in third world countries to send money internationally at much lower uh, uh, costs than the usual international money transfer um, companies. You can go further than that. Uh, the uh, uh, Swiss company has been providing the uh, Rohingya refugees with identity cards that are not identity cards, that are registers on a blockchain, providing them with a way to authenticate themselves whenever receiving help or identifying themselves to authorities. More than that, uh, you actually have one coin, hate coin, which was launched specifically for nonprofit organizations. You can transfer uh, this, you can buy this coin to 
provide money to non-profit organizations and they can use the aid coin to distribute in a transparent way those funds to non-profit organizations all over the world. Even more interesting, you actually have um, an exchange, an online exchange where you can buy and sell digital tokens, digital assets. You have uh, uh, an exchange that is uh, specifically targeted for non-profit um, organizations, for non-governmental organizations, charging lower uh, um, uh, costs for transmission and for transactions, but also providing a bunch of services that are relevant in some cases, uh, like, for example, uh, the identification of donors, the identification of um, the people who receive the help, guaranteeing that there is transparency in the money, in the use of the money that is being donated. So there's actually more that you can do using, blo using blockchain at non-profit organizations other than just thinking about, oh, we can get more money or send money more quickly or cheaply. Uh, we at the APVC are looking in particular um, in the area of blockchain for non-profit um, or non-governmental organizations. We are looking at two technologies in particular. One is the POLIS uh, project. This allows for secure online anonymous voting. So we will be implementing uh, this voting process at the association um, for uh, uh, making decisions, uh, uh, getting decisions from our from our. Um, from our members, uh, so we already made the first uh, a first online vote, which is, do you agree with us getting the votes on the blockchain? And we got 14 votes, no no votes against, so, so it was a, su a successful <laughs> campaign. Uh, so this is a very interesting uh, technology because you can tie it with your national ID card in the case of any country. Uh, we are also um, working on um, using this technology, um, EGAS, which is made by a company called APLA, uh, Electronic Government as a Service. It's basically a blockchain um, platform that provides a bunch of, of uh, processes already put in place uh, for organizing, as it says, economic, public, and social uh, activities. Not only voting, but also transmission of property, implementation of uh, rule of law, smart uh, contracts. Um, and so we are, we are um, intending and testing this technology to use within the, um, the association. So there's a lot of interesting uses that can be made of um, the blockchain in nonprofit organizations, not just the common or the usual use of Bitcoin, it's, it's money and it's cheaper. There's a whole lot of different stuff that you can uh, use blockchain for. Um, our, at the association, um, although most of us, um, myself, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a trader in, in crypto assets, I'm a, a broker in crypto assets, I'm also a miner. I mine Ethereum, Verge, uh, and as a trader and, uh, and broker, I, I hold uh, Cardano, so Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Cardano, um, and a bunch of other coins, uh, whatever is profitable at the moment. So I am, uh, uh, most of us at the association are for profit. Uh, we are definitely interested in profit. Uh, there's no one more interested in profit than me. <laughs> I have no problem admitting that. But the way we see it at the association, just let me make a quick parenthesis. It's the first association that I'm, I've ever um, accepted being a member of. Um, uh, at, at, the association, at the association level, uh, we think that we are talking about um, a different stage than, um, than what blockchain is for enterprises. At enterprise, at companies, at, in, in the for-profit scenario, blockchain currently means the usual um, uh, that it means at, at companies. For making a better profit, you either, you, you better get more, you either get more revenues or you decrease costs. And this is the way that blockchain is being used at for-profit organizations. Um, getting more revenue, decreasing costs. I have no problem against that. I like it. I love it. I do it. At the association level, we think that the focus is... 
uh, we think that, that the, we are at a, another stage, which is at the point of uh, we have to create value, and we do that by um, um, working together, and we are at the point where we distribute uh, value. So right now, more than being at the stage where we are able, and we are able to increase revenues and decrease costs, more than that, at this point, blockchain brings us the capability to create value, not only economic and financial value, but also social um, and personal value. And blockchain brings us the capability to distribute that value in a very different way than that it's been done in, uh, in the past. Thank you. That's it. Mostly on time, I hope.